doing another gouache painting I've been watching more gouache videos lately like even more than usual because I was trying to weigh in whether or not gouache tubes are worth their price I have my sights set on the Holbein artist squash and I've come to the conclusion that I do want to try at least their 5 milliliter gouache tubes See how I feel about them in comparison to the Mia gouache that I'm more used to. The sort of thing is I've been watching a lot of gouache videos and it went far off topic there. And I've had this urge to paint with them so much since I also finally got my Baohong hot pressed paper. This is the paper that I was more used to, the hot pressed one that you guys see me use with gouache actually pretty new to me so this one has a rougher texture it's harder to sketch with but i feel like it would be better for the gouache since it would grip onto the paints better because i just feel like the very smooth surface of the hot pressed one really did not help when the layers beneath would reactivate when i don't want them to so i want to see if that theory is right i want to see if it will, will hold on to the gouache better So yeah, the first few layers I am doing with watercolors and I'm using my Magello watercolors for this one but I added in paints grey from my Sennelier set. I just so love watercolors, it's so easy to paint with and, it's, and it feels so comforting to me to some extent. It just doesn't frustrate me like gouache does, but I still want to keep painting with gouache. That's the thing, it's just it's so rewarding in the end when everything falls together. But it just feels like watercolors can never let me down. And this first few layers is just to set the tone for the whole piece. Most of it is going to be covered in gouache anyway. I just feel like I really want that um, nice gradient I could get with watercolors, mostly for her, the subject on the foreground. I want to get that nice gradients with watercolors especially for her dress so this whole underpainting is that what it's called um it's just to guide me with the color scheme along the way the colors for this piece are also a little bit different this green is so nice and vibrant it's the cleanest coolest green in my palette and i don't know what it's doing in this piece that i want to be really moody and dark but i really like how it looks with the the yellow, uh, this one is lemon yellow, which is my least favorite yellow. I just don't use it very often. It's very cool toned, which isn't where I normally go for my color palettes. But I think for this piece, and especially for her gown, it would be a really good combination. So I kept the color palette very limited. I used the lemon yellow, the very cool green that I was talking about, and the paints gray, I believe. Today we are painting a scene from the movie Crimson Peak, which I just love so much. I uh, really love Guillermo del Toro, and this turned out to be visually one of my favorite movies ever. But the funny thing is I don't remember much of the storyline, well, except for that re reveal at the end. But most of the visuals really are what stuck to me. They're just so clear in my head that, that they would just pop up randomly sometimes. Like the visions of the ghosts and the rotting house and especially the wardrobe. My god, the clothing in this movie was so beautiful. 
so when I came across this photo on Pinterest, I just knew that I needed to paint it. I just think that for me it would be like exercising a demon and that sounds so fun. <laughs> So, so while I was starting out with the gouache, her face turned out too pink for me and I preferred it to be warmer because pink doesn't really appear in uh, other parts of the painting so it would be weird. So I kept going back to that and just added some yellow so I could get a better feel for what I wanted. A uh, big part of the process with painting gouache is just mixing colors just right and it's and also, also the most frustrating part. With watercolors, I feel like there's a lot more wiggle room for getting your colors right and it's also just easier to mix them. You just add... They're the consistency of water so that's why there's not a lot of struggle physically when you're mixing with them. Also makes it easier to paint them to mix colors even when you're already painting on the paper. So yeah, with gouache, I spend a lot more time mixing colors than actually painting, which is why it's so important to clean your brush constantly and properly because just the slightest amount of paint will muddy up your colors. So it's really something that you need to, to watch out for. So the reason why I did the washi tape this way is because I came across this video from one of the channels that I'm subscribed to. I don't want to mispronounce them, so I'm gonna just edit it into the video. Check out his channel, by the way. It's so good. So when he paints, he puts a piece of scrap paper next to the actual painting so he sees what the colors will look like on the actual paper before putting it down. So I thought that was just genius and, and so I did my own version of that. I've just taped off a bit more to the left side so I can try out my paints there first. So this really helped me a lot. It's such a simple thing but it's so effective especially for me where a lot of my process is just trial and error for my color mixing. The reason why the pinks didn't turn out that well because I forgot to test them out on the space that I left for exactly that reason, but it did eliminate a lot of those errors for me. The dark color on this is just a mixture of the orangey red and the dark green that I had. They really waited to use the very dark blue until later on so I can leave the darkest shadows for last. But still towards the end, I still had to use some black because there's not a lot of dark colors in this set and I really needed to just make the walls look dark in contrast to her. Towards the middle, I did went over some of the parts with this reddish orange because I remember this scene in the movie where the floors looked like they were bleeding, which I believe was later explained to be red clay that the house was built on. But yeah, it's one of the imagery from the movie that is still stuck in my head, so I am incorporating that, but this time on the walls. So again, I really tried to add some orange textures for the background. I feel like it helps to add this gory, sort of dirty feeling to the piece, which is what I was going for.
so something i like to do is bring some colors together from different parts of the painting like like some of the green from her dress i'm bringing that over to her hair and then later on i'm adding some of the red from the walls and her hair down to her dress so it's very subtle and I like to keep it that way so that it's not too obvious but it's enough to make the piece look cohesive. It feels like I'm talking too much, but I really like painting on cold pressed paper, especially with gouache. So the texture of the cold pressed paper is really nice for gouache. It really just holds onto the paint and it helps with the problem I had with the layers lifting too easily. The only downside is that it makes it hard to do small details over that bumpy texture. So I really had to use more water than usual to make the paint less dense but it also messed up the nice opacity of the paints and especially towards the end when you want to add those nice opaque paint strokes so that was kind of what i had to give away so i could keep the nice rough texture for the beginning this whole piece was done purely with my giorgione brushes and i've talked about them before but i just love them so much they're so affordable, I probably paid around 300 pesos for them and it really helped that it comes with a lot of different sizes so I didn't need to reach for my other brushes and that most of them were flat brushes which I really love for gouache so yeah, I didn't do much for the background I kind of like the texture I did for the wall so I just I'm just leaving it like that. I just fixed the couch under the window so that they wouldn't align so much. And then I put in the finishing details. So this painting took a while for me to finish because it's a bit more detailed than my usual ones. But I do hope that you guys like it. Um, and I enjoyed painting it so much. Next video is gonna be my prong watercolors, prong or prang watercolors review. So watch out for that and I'll see you guys soon. Mm -hmm.